All right, folks, so today let's take a break from some of the classic CS papers from a few decades ago and jump right into a paper which is from this century. Indeed, it's from this year and this very month. The title of the paper is IO is faster than the CPU. Let's partition resources and eliminate most OS abstractions. And it's by Enberg, Rao, and Tarcoma, all of whom are from the University of Helsinki. This paper is about to appear in the workshop on hot topics and operating systems, which as I'm recording this is in about a week's time. And this workshop focuses more on early stage work. The central contention of the paper is that all the operating system abstractions that we currently use, which is for all practical purposes, basically Unix, were designed back at a time when IO speeds were much, much slower than CPU speeds. What this meant was that most applications spent a lot of time waiting for IO and could burn CPU cycles while they were doing that. But today, there are two major trends in computer hardware that are invalidating that long-held assumption. The first one is that the underlying I.O. hardware is getting faster and faster and rapidly approaching the point where just keeping up with I.O., both in terms of network as well as storage, can saturate modern CPUs easily. The second trend is that single-threaded CPU performance is beginning to level off. This is also sometimes referred to as the end of Moore's law. And this paper is trying to propose an operating system architecture which can deal with these two trends in computer hardware. So to use some concrete examples from hardware that is already available, a modern 40 GB network interface card, which is pretty common in large data centers, can already completely saturate the CPU. At the same time, we're also beginning to see solid state flash drives, which are approaching the same speeds as DRAM. What this means is that the currently prevalent model of doing IO asynchronously, which embeds the assumption that IO is slow and that your main thread can go do other stuff while it's waiting for IO, is beginning to make less and less sense. IO is getting fast enough that it doesn't make sense to pay the overhead of doing a context switch because with modern IO hardware, in that much time, your IO would have been completed already. An interesting question to ponder is, why are these operating system abstractions so heavyweight? Why are they imposing such a big performance penalty? And one answer is that over time, the semantics of these abstractions have become more and more and more complicated. POSIX, which is the portable operating system interface standard, which basically standardizes Unix semantics, is specified in a document that is about three and a half thousand pages long. If you were just going for raw performance, you could pick a tiny fraction of POSIX semantics and get drastic increases in performance. Currently in Linux to service one network request, you need to make three system calls and all of them have pretty high overheads. And this overhead gets worse if the processing of the packet and the application thread are on two different CPU cores. All of this is bad for performance because it leads to unpredictable latency in the long tail. So to get over all these problems, the authors are proposing a pretty radical solution. The central principles are to focus on application level parallelism and securely partition hardware and have the application directly deal with its secure partition of that hardware. They call this architecture a parakernel. The resources that get partitioned are completely managed by the application itself. 
and those resources that cannot get securely partitioned are multiplexed by the kernel, much like a traditional operating system. The idea here is that when you synchronize between CPU cores, that hurts performance, and we can get good application level parallelism by partitioning the resources between CPU cores so that each core can run independently at full speed. So how do you do this in practice? Let's look at each kind of resource one by one. Doing this for RAM is actually pretty easy because all modern CPUs come with some sort of a memory management unit that makes it easy to partition RAM into virtual address spaces and then give each process its own virtual address space. So that way each process just deals with its own partition of RAM and is unable to peek into other processes partitions. This is not so easy to do with IO devices because they don't exactly have the counterpart of a memory management unit. However, a lot of new network and storage devices support multiple queues in the hardware itself. This means that the operating system can partition one queue per CPU. But because the number of queues is pretty large, in some cases up to 65,000, you could actually do a much finer grain partition and allocate a queue per process. So you could have the parakernel give each process its own transmit and receive queue pair in the network interface card. And you can do the same thing for storage as well. Some modern network cards can even execute packet filter logic directly on the hardware itself. This means you do not even need to have the operating system in the network receive path because as the packets arrive, they can be processed by a packet filter and then directly handed off to the application to consume. The other major argument the authors are making here is to eliminate most POSIX abstractions. This argument is supported by the fact that using things like the DPDK and SVDK, a lot of modern applications can already bypass the network and storage stacks of the modern kernel and handle them completely in user space, not having to pay the overhead of context switches and operating system abstraction overhead. So you don't need to use the socket abstraction as we discussed before, you can have your network card steer packets directly to your process. The parakernel architecture wants to eliminate all blocking from operating system interfaces. The problem with blocking in the OS is that if you have that, you then require applications to use kernel threads so that they can have concurrency. But with this model, kernel threads are not needed and you could have parallelism at the process level using primitives such as coroutines or fibers. An example of an operating system abstraction that hurts performance is the page cache. Many performance sensitive applications will just use the MLOC system call so that none of their RAM gets swapped out to disk by the operating system. This Again, goes back to the end-to-end -end principle, which I had discussed in another video, because page cache eviction that is managed by the kernel does not know anything. And so you have this pattern where applications choose to simply bypass it. So if the underlying hardware supports secure partitioning of the hardware, and then you can give each process its own secure partition. That's all well and good, but with legacy hardware, we still have cases where resources can't be partitioned. For example, we have old network interface cards which don't have multiple queues. They just have a single transmit receive queue. And in that case, the operating system still has to multiplex as one resource over a number of processes. The authors think and probably correctly so, that this kind of hardware will begin to die out and that the parakernel will need to provide multiplexing of hardware only to support such legacy hardware. What the authors are proposing here is very similar to the idea of an exokernel proposed by Dawson Engler and his team 
back in 1997 or so, which makes a similar argument that says that all OS abstractions should be eliminated and the role of the OS should be simply to securely multiplex hardware resources. The proposal here is somewhat different because the parakernel does not want to multiplex resources. It simply wants to make secure partitions of them and hand those out to processes. The other big question is whether we can get away from having to support all of POSIX semantics. And this looks more and more likely because most applications are implemented on top of some sort of a managed runtime these days, whether it's Node.js or the JVM or the .NET VM. And you can write your entire application purely on top of these managed runtimes without having to worry about the POSIX semantics underneath it. However, it turns out these runtimes use only a small fraction of POSIX interfaces. Also, the growing popularity of kernel bypass frameworks such as DPDK for networking and SPDK for storage make the case for getting rid of POSIX even stronger. And lastly, we should quickly discuss how the parakernel architecture proposed here is different from virtualization. And as the authors point out, the big difference is that hypervisors virtualize an entire machine abstraction. So for example, an x86 VM provides stack on top of that, like a kernel and everything else that goes on top of it. The parakernel architecture does not want to do all that. It merely wants to provide a process level abstraction as opposed to a full machine level abstraction. The authors mentioned that they are developing a prototype parakernel written in Rust, and I very much look forward to seeing some implementation details on this very neat idea. So that was a look at a very recent paper proposing a new operating system architecture called Parakernels. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.